damn, I kind of hate that I don't get any more dumbass comments. I was expecting way more for the Sanjay interview. Mario Kart. You know, we all like Mario Kart. I think that's safe to say. These games are just generally quite fun, but I'll save my criticisms and compliments for when I do a Mario Kart retrospective sometime in the future. But regardless, I think there's one thing I'm pretty sure anyone can say about the series at this point, and that's that these games are super similar. No duh, right? These aren't fun adventures, just car races, so there's obviously some serious similarities between the games. Needless to say, that is one of the biggest complaints that could possibly be thrown at the series. Mario Kart as a series started at Super Mario Kart on the Super Nintendo in 1992, but what if I said that wasn't true? Famicom Grand Prix F1 Race and Famicom Grand Prix 2 3D Hot Rally released in 1987 and 1988 respectively, exclusively for the Japan exclusive Famicom Disk System. For some reason I've always had an interest in covering these two games, which is funny as evident by the video length I do not have much to say. One reason why I find these two interesting is because they are completely different games really. Not only different from the Mario Kart series, but also from each other. One is a top down racer, while one is a pseudo 3D game similar to Pole Position or Outrun. Let's focus on the former for now. Famicom Grand Prix is not very good. Listen, I'm trying to be positive since that last video on the Mario 64 one were both full of me ranting, but this game is not that good. Starting the game off, you get the option to pick a random car with a cost corresponding to how good it is. But funnily enough, I found a lot less trouble playing with the lower cars. The first one I bought was this yellow one on the second row, but something you'll be quick to notice with this game is the slippery traction. So going with the slower ones is basically the only way to play the game without skidding everywhere. Now as for the traction I just mentioned, holy fuck it's bad. Look, okay, this is the NES, there weren't that many racing games to base this off of, but like, come on man, what is this? There's these little meters at the bottom, body, gas, and the most important one, tires. Body and gas simply give you a game over if you run out, which will basically never happen, but as you race your tire meter goes down, decreasing your traction and making the game a nightmare to play. This presents a risk reward dynamic I'll get into in just a second, but I don't think the dynamic is worth sacrificing the playability of the game most of the time. The risk reward dynamic is simple. There's a pit stop near the finish line that you can turn into to get a repair on your car, including the wheels, which is good for sure but wastes a lot of time. So it presents an obvious conundrum, go into the pit stop and waste time or risk racing through the whole thing with slippery ass tyres. However, it's only an illusion of a risk reward dynamic because in reality it's either go to the pit stop and not finish last, or try to skip it and crash into every single fucking wall in existence, so it's more of a mandatory thing than a risk reward thing. Not only was this executed rather poorly because risking it is 100% the worst option. This also makes body and gas meters completely redundant because the pit stops are essential. I also have to criticize the controls. Other than the low traction, they don't hinder your movement, but it just feels really, really stiff. You turn surprisingly slow, and while that doesn't make it more difficult to play, it feels really unsatisfying. However, my biggest complaint is sadly very uninteresting to talk about, which is screen crunch. I fucking hate it when I watch videos about really bad games and one of the biggest complaints is fucking screen crunch. Because it's really just a black and white issue, either make the sprite smaller or do some funky camera techniques. These two solutions could work better in different scenarios, but in most cases it's better to do things with the camera to add breathing room, as the other option will most likely interfere with the artistic direction of your game. And while the art of this game is quite nice, especially for the NES, I only say you should add more camera work because obviously 1, lower screen crunch, but also 2, to add more action to the game? I don't have any simpler way to put it, but having the camera quickly swerve to readjust to the direction you're moving could honestly look pretty cool and make the game more satisfying to play. I don't have much more to say on this game, it's just kinda mediocre. It has a lot of potential to be super fun to play, but is held far back by its kinda shitty movement, low attraction, and screen crunch. And there's just too many things holding it back for its potential to even matter, which is why I give it a 4 out of 10. Just under a year and a half later in 1988, Nintendo released a sequel to this game, Famicom Grand Prix 2 3D Hot Rally. And it's honestly funny Nintendo called it that because other than it being a game where you drive a car, there's not a single thing about the game that is similar to the first. First off, I just have to mention the presentation. While the music is just okay, the visuals are fucking phenomenal for the NES. Even if you don't like it as much as other games, disregarding personal preference and just looking at it on a technical level, this game looks crazy good for NES and is a big technical step up from the game's predecessor, Rad Racer. It's honestly a miracle that this game runs as well as it does, given not only does it have the simulated X and Z axis, 
x-axis in a pole position and shit, but also it simulated y-axis that wasn't even in Super Mario Kart or F-Zero, which were a console generation ahead. However, sadly this game fucks up pretty bad in the gameplay department too. Once again, the turnings is very stiff which feels pretty bad. Booting up the game has you selecting between three different vehicles, and to be honest, the red one is literally the only car that is somewhat manageable. Much like in many other NES races, the turns just come out of fucking nowhere and it doesn't help that the roads can get super narrow at times. Look, okay, I'm tired as fuck. I'm sorry that this video wasn't as long as you guys probably wanted considering the time between uploads has been longer than usual. I rate the game 4 out of 10 and the second 5 out of 10. I'm gonna go to bed but I have to say one last thing. What the fuck does any of this has to do with Mario? They're on the box art, that's what.